Hello and welcome back to another guide for Lamplighters League. My name is Heiken and today we're going to go into the in-depth guide to equipment, cards and status effects. And the reason why I bundle these three things together is it's really more an advanced guide where we're going to cover each of the topics and they nicely synergize with each other. So we're going to start looking through equipment first with all of the equipment available. Then we're going to start looking through the most important cards and then we're going to start explaining the status effects as we go. Uh, so let's jump right into the topic. Let's go through the equipment and I would generally classify equipment as uh, combat, uh, crowd control equipment, uh, healing uh, equipment and any form of damage equipment. That is a rough generalization and I'll give you an overview about kind of beginner equipment all the way up to more advanced equipment. So from the beginning you find a couple of uh, crowd control-ish items. Uh, the flash bomb is the first one, blinds enemies and applies mark to everybody in a kind of small-ish area. There are additional items like the fire bomb and uh, the poison uh, bomb, uh, both uh, applying one debuff and cre typically creating a zone where that debuff um, lasts so that enemies are trying to avoid uh, that zone. Uh, both of them are strong in a way where you can shut down a corridor. Then there is the smoke bomb, which is a buff consumable for yourself, making it less likely to get hit and crit, which you're typically um, throwing onto your agents uh, themselves. So these are kind of the starting items together with bandages, uh, which is the first healing item that allows you to heal for 40 hit points and the first pure damage item frag grenade one that shreds some armor and deals some damage that's typically what you will see once you're uh, going into the uh, game but there are a couple of more items uh, that i would uh, go through and their uh, usefulness uh, starting with Haste and Flask, which comes in two different uh, forms. Haste and Flask 1 grants 1 AP to a different uh, target. Haste and Flask number 2 grants 1 AP to all teammates in an area, so you can cluster up and essentially gain additional AP. Both of them are quite powerful, specifically since they uh, consider the buffs and buff consumables, so several characters have the option to even gain additional AP when using those types of buff consumables. And typically it's uh, for those rounds where you just need a little bit more AP. And if you are anyways having a team that kind of nearly clusters up, it's a great consumable. Then there is Medical Kit 1 and 2, which is the upgraded version for bandages. The Medical Kit 1 heals 75 hit points to self or adjacent target, and Medical Kit 2 basically heals them full, so it's 9,999 uh, hit points, how it is coded. Uh, both of them are good. A uh, couple of characters like Anna Sophie uh, will even regain AP when using healing consumables, making them a predominantly better healing character. Then there are a couple of uh, um, items that specifically uh, go around the stress mechanic. Uh, one set of items, the Stress Flask 1 and the Stress Flask 2, inflict stress to enemies. Stress class 1 um, with uh, 2 stress and class 2 with 4 stress into a small AOE cone. The other is stress healing item. Stress remedy 1 and stress remedy 2. Healing 3 and respectively 5 stress. These are good for characters like Celestino Al Al Alex and Reed, where you're having stress damage as an alternative win condition. The stress remedy is generally fine on many characters, uh, specifically those who can't heal stress themselves uh, before suffering a stress break and then a very lengthy recovery. Sometimes it's better to just drink the uh, stress uh, remedy. And you can also uh, infuse it to a target teammate adjacent to you, so that makes it even a little bit better. So definitely a good item. Um, then, finally, another healing item with Healing Elixir, which is really the AoE ranged heal option, so you can throw it right under your feet, but uh, you can also throw it somewhere else. In an AoE of 3, it heals 50, and that can be the uh, real... Um, difference between life and death in some cases uh, for characters like Anne Sophie who regain AP from healing you can heal three characters with that and regain three AP 
Then there are a couple of um, additional damage um, items, such as Frag Grenade 2 with 55 damage and more armor shredding, and Dynamite with a delayed uh, timer but a massive 5 AoE damage, which isn't bad either. And um, upgrades for various of the crowd control items. Um, Firebomb 1 becomes Firebomb uh, 2 with more AoE. Uh, Thunderbomb uh, will be introduced later in the game where you are in a, a smaller AoE knocking down all of the targets and dealing damage on top of that. Then there is Shock Bomb uh, with a large AoE creating shock and the Poison Bomb 2 with a larger AoE uh, you're inflicting poison. So all of those fall under the category of either debuffs or um, crowd control in case of uh, the Thunder Bomb. And finally, there are a couple of additional items, the Vigor Tonics 1 and 2, which um, will allow your characters to regain their signature charges. Uh, that is specifically good for characters that very much rely on their signature ability. Um, and very rare items that come very late in the game, one being the Uncanny Grenade with a whooping 250 points of damage and 20 armor shred. Um, that is rare but a very much lifesaver because it can delete a lot of enemies right off the bat and the lamplighter's tonic which is kind of the ultimate uh, heal um, and buff item targeted for one um, character heals 70 hit points four stress and uh, the um, grants one ap to all teammates in a targeted uh, area so it is the better version of the healing elixir it's kind of all in one AOE heal, uh, stress heal, as well as AP to all characters. And since it is considered a healing item, Anna Sophie, for instance, would regain uh, AP from it as well. However, Lamplighter's tonics are very rare and hard to come by. So, how would I um, tier or um, classify those items generally in terms of usefulness? Uh, what um, I perceive to be uh, very valuable were the healing items. Um, they start out being ultra valuable and as the team uh, as the time progresses they become less and less valuable because typically you are not going to take a lot of damage if you play it correct however you can never play at 100 percent mistakes are going to happen and that's where you really want medical kit or if you do have the right character healing elixirs are really good as well another excellent item that i would recommend are thunder bombs just because the knockdown uh, takes away the enemy's uh, turn completely aoe knockdown is absolutely great thunder bomb 2 uh, doesn't only knock down them but also inflicts uh, damage on uh, on top of it so just a very very good item the third great item that i would recommend is stress remedy uh, which is of course very helpful to have at least one in there i'm excluding the ultra rare items lamplighter leak and uh, tonic and uncanny grenade because these would be truly kind of s tier items but the a tier would be thunder bomb um, a medical kit a healing elixir um, and stress remedy as well as potentially also the vigor tonic because with vigor tonic what you can do is you can regain signature charges um, a minus tier to, uh, to b tier would be haste and flask great on paper in reality i've seen um, it's more like shifting ap around instead of really gaining a lot of ap in the right circumstances this absolutely can be a fantastic uh, consumable but of, more often than not, um, it'll just uh, be an okay move instead of a great game-winning move. Other B-tier items that I personally like, but uh, that are rather niche, would be stress flasks in the right team. Uh, they are definitely helping, as well as all of the other debuff um, abilities. I used fire bombs as well as shock grenades, as well as poison bombs regularly. They are... Diffic more difficult to find but um, you shouldn't underestimate that they are locking down an entire area where enemies are very likely to not move into plus the debuffs are uh, quite uh, penalizing as well which nicely brings us to um, now the right stand to actually talk about status effects and damage over time effects so in terms of status effects 
the following exist in the game and the game doesn't do a great job in explaining them status effect number one is bleeding where um, when an enemy uh, moves uh, their melee abilities are reduced and they always suffer 20 uh, points of damage at the end of the turn Bleeding cannot be applied by any of uh, the consumables, but bleeding can be applied by various melee attacks. Blinded, um, which for instance can be done with a flash bomb or with Latif's um, uh, ability, uh, will uh, reduce the hit chance by 50%. Absolute fantastic debuff uh, because it uh, will reduce the damage output by 50% and lasts for multiple rounds. Dazed, uh, which you can get via many of the skills, but not necessarily by consumable items, will take one AP away from a unit. That is super helpful uh, because it also halves their efficiency. The next one is Evade, which none of uh, these uh, things give, but some characters, Latif is a, g a great example in it, can uh, generate Evade stacks. Evade stacks stack on top of each other, and uh, the next attack that that character will suffer essentially um, will be completely dodged so it's 100 percent uh, dodge for that next up would be inspire as above uh, you're not being able to get that via consumables but inspire comes typically from uh, cards the heralds uh, is one of uh, the most noticeable one that is 15 percent extra hit chance and 15 percent crit chance so very good buff invisible again none of the consumables do it but several uh, abilities um, like um, uh, like uh, Purnima's ability uh, will allow you to be invisible. Enemies can no longer attack you. Purnima, um, with um, her marking ability zero in, will become invisible, as an example. Then the next one is the knockdown uh, debuff. You can, for instance, get that from push kick of an Ingrid or from thunder bombs. So that is very much acquirable via consumables. Um, and uh, the enemy needs to um, does not only lose their next turn, but it takes them two AP to get up. So if you combine dazed and knockdown, for instance, they cannot get up in the next turn and are essentially taken out for two rounds. Next up, marked as a debuff, which you, for instance, can get uh, with light em up uh, from uh, Eddie or with uh, various other mechanics, such as Fadir um, uh, and uh, people attacking him or cards that uh, will uh, mark enemies or uh, via consumables uh, uh, that I showed earlier. Um, most noticeably the flash bomb which does uh, marking and blinds them on top of uh, them so mark is a debuff and uh, allows for 15 percent extra hit chance that in itself isn't only great several characters such as eddie or poor nima uh, very much uh, scale off of uh, marked and do have special abilities that do extra stuff against marked targets and finally smoke is a, a buff um, which we talked about uh, with the smoke bombs, but also with abilities like Isaac, who does have his vent ability, allowing to create smoke around him, will basically make uh, it harder for you to hit. So minus 25% hit chance on top of the cover that you do have and minus 25% crit chance. Great against melee characters as well. Which brings us to damage over time effects. We shortly talked about it. There are de facto uh, four of them uh, in the game. Number one is Cursed. Um, Cursed is a, a debuff that uh, Celestine can do, but also um, others, uh, other cards can do. And that um, allows every uh, future attack to generate stress. Uh, it's a very rare debuff. The more uh, frequent debuffs are Poison, Burning and Shock. So Poisoned as an uh, ability uh, coming um, uh, either via poisoning abilities such as uh, Whispering Knives or via Poison Bombs uh, means that the unit receives 10 damage and one stress per round, which is great in itself. Burning as a debuff, which comes for instance via Fire Bombs or um, via abilities like Isaac's uh, fully loaded uh, Cannonade um, will uh, create 25 base damage each round until the enemy extinguishes themselves. Uh, keep in mind that does not uh, apply to all of the enemies. Some enemies are immune to fire damage. And then finally, Shocked, which is my personal um, favorite damage over time ability, which you can, for instance, get uh, via uh, talismans, 
by the way, they can also do burning and poison. I should have set that up um, uh, as a full disclosure or via uh, the shock grenades. Uh, shock deals 10 per, uh, damage per round and the enemy has minus 50 speed um, and 50% speed. And therefore, uh, specifically melee characters are very, very vulnerable once uh, they are uh, taking shock, uh, shock damage. So that is really all of the damage over time effects, as well as most or all of uh, the equipment, even with a tier rating. Everything in S tier, A tier is good. The B tier is fine. Whatever I haven't uh, tiered is typically not really worth it um, unless you find it for free. Frag grenades, for instance, can be good in the right build, but I would give it generally a C tier. Most of the characters at the end uh, game do have more damage by themselves unless uh, the frag grenades are for free, like in Judith case. Moving on to the cards. So let's talk about the cards of the Undrawn Hand. We're going through a couple of basics and then the cards itself. So the Undrawn Hand uh, will always yield two cards at the end of every mission, but you can increase that. The name of the game is to work with Madame May as she can increase quite a few things. Number one, uh, increase the number of uh, your maximum Undrawn Hand cards from two to three. Number two, always allow an additional undrawn heart, uh, hand card uh, to be drawn at the end of every uh, mission. And number three, to allow greater rarity of the cards. So increase the chance of a rare card and then significantly increases the chance of a rare card and significantly increases the chance of an uncommon card. So what that really does is you're getting better and more cards. You can apply more cards and she even has uh, an option to uh, raise the card level to four, later to five and get more ink off of it. Additionally to that, the undrawn hand can get an extra card per mission with a so-called mode of faith. Uh, they are typically located at quote unquote secret positions. Uh, there are multiple um, uh, theoretical positions where that mode of fate can be located and it is randomly determined once the uh, map is being uh, created and spawned so in that procedural generation one mode of fate will be uh, generated in each of the maps if you find it you get an additional card so at the end in the end game you will receive four potential cards uh, per mission and with the right upgrades you will uh, receive a lot of better or rarer cards so uh, cards come in three rarities common cards white uh, um, uh, uncommon cards uh, greenish and rare cards in a uh, purplish tone and of course generally speaking the rarer cards are having the better effects on your gameplay so let's uh, look through a couple of the cards since there is no official wiki or list of all of the cards um, i can only talk about the say 200 hours that i sink into the game and all of the cards that i've uh, seen and instead of going through the 50 odd cards that there are i would like to highlight a few that you might want to look out for we're starting with uh, the base tier first uh, then the uncommon cards and then the rare cards and i talk about why i think that the, those are the best cards that you could theoretically have. Let's start with a common tier. The common tier is typically consisting of cards that allow you to use anything that you can use as a consumable but once a mission or uh, with a cooldown. So if you think about the consumables you will find a lot of common cards that do exactly that. There's a common card that allows you to mark, there's a common card that allows you to blind, there's a common card that allows to create smoke, bomb, uh, smoke. there's a common card that allows burning, one that is doing shocking one that is uh, doing poisoning. So all of that exists 
incommon cards. There is one that once permission allows you to heal up um, later not only a teammate but multiple uh, teammates. All of those cards are generally okay but nothing to write home um, about because you can substitute them with consumables and use the undrawn hand slots more efficiently for effects that you cannot get out of consumables. The um, common cards that are worth it, however, are the following. So card number one would be the bull. The reason why I value the bull incredibly highly on melee characters, Ingrid in particular, is because Knockdown is an ultra, ultra strong um, crowd control ability. If you can knock down characters, that means they cannot act. The bull allows you to knock down targets six tiles. If you knock characters into other characters, the follow-up characters will uh, be knocked down further. So if they line up nicely, you can knock down even multiple characters in just one AP of, a, um, of uh, usage. If you can reduce the cooldown even further, you can essentially use the bull whenever you like. The second um, common card that I would highlight is the herald. Uh, that in my opinion shouldn't be a common card because it is just too good. A fully upgraded Herald uh, will uh, not only create Inspiry to all of your teammates but anything from level 3 upwards will cleanse all debuffs and it also refunds its one AP that you need in order to spend it. So it's a completely free action, everybody gets inspired so that's 15% to hit and 15% crit, great buff all around. And on top of that, you're cleansing debuffs. So debuffs such as knockdown, debuffs such as any of the dots that are running on your characters. And cleansing knockdown is a big, big thing because you're essentially giving another character two um, ability points. Moving on to more niche, but nonetheless really great uh, wide cards, which would be the Monument, specifically for Celestine, an absolute banger of a card because it uh, replicates the stress flasks, but in a massive AOE if you skill it up to level 5. Great card if you are running a stress team because three base stress for so many enemies, if you can then reset that cooldown and just go again, that already means that most of them are at stress breaking um, limits. And I don't need to tell you just how good that is. So the monument, an absolute banger of a card in the right team. The other one is the tyrant following the same logic increases your max stre uh, um, stress which is great and then attackers suffer one uh, stress on top of it so if you're running a stress team those two cards go very very nicely together and specifically in the hands of celestine they are deadly so that's it with the common cards let's move to the uncommon the uncommon cards are what i would describe more passive um, abilities uh, that uh, sometimes give you great additional benefits and sometimes there are active debuffs that are just really really uh, good um, but not as good as the um, rare ones. So let's take a look at some of the uncommon cards that are absolutely fantastic. Number one is uh, the Great Wind which is a passive one. When you become inspired for instance from the Herald you gain plus two speed that her, uh, by itself is already great but on top of it whilst inspired all of your attacks have a 25% chance to grant you one AP for up to three AP per round that is phenomenal it's just a very 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 good ability all around and I cannot stress uh, just how inspiring uh, that is great wind is a good ability to have on any character uh, I couldn't see a single character that wouldn't benefit from that combination the other one uh, that I value very, very highly is the Conjunction, potentially a strong, if not the strongest card in the game. On level five, you are um, uh, getting a 75% chance to regain an AP yourself when using any buff ability. Mind you, the Herald is considered to be such a buff ability. Any other buff ability uh, would count as well. And uh, the targets do have a um, chance of 25% to also gain one AP. So that in itself is just an AP spender. And those two cards together go like curry and rice. They are incredibly strong. So next up, 
I want to talk about the Comet, another passive ability uh, that is great, mainly for its hit chance. 15% hit chance on the highest level is nothing to uh, scoff at. It is very, very good. That is like the superior scope uh, of XCOM and it does not disappoint on top of it whenever you reload you become inspired that's just the icing on the cake but i can tell you the 15 percent hit chance are great so comet very very good another one that i like is the gambler uh, after dodging an attack which of course uh, goes very well with someone like Le Le latif uh, after dodging an attack, you get inspired and recover 30 health. So on someone like Latif, uh, you can uh, very much use that in order to basically heal him uh, uh, for free. Another one that gives great uh, passive abilities is the Avenger. 40 max hit points are great and anyone who attacks you becomes marked. That doesn't matter whether or not they hit you, but they always become marked. So for tanks, that's a great ability. And that together with a gambler, you can imagine, makes for a really, really nice um, passive uh, tanking ability. And finally, uh, the last one that I wanted to talk through is the Weaver, um, which um, is a card that uh, reduces the speed by 50% for two rounds so that's an extended um, shock status uh, minus the damage that it takes but the weaver itself regains ap so it is for free and with a massive aoe of five uh, the reaver is, uh, the weaver is a very very good card if you're um, uh, tired of dealing with enemy melee attackers this here is just solving it for you because the next two rounds they will be doing nothing but just running in your direction and it is for free so there is no downside in using it which brings us to the final part the rare cards of the game the rare cards of the game I would describe as almost entirely passive or if they are active they do have a pretty oomphy uh, effect. So let's take a look at some of uh, them that I like to use. I think by far the best uh, and most commonly used rare card in my opinion or in, in my uh, personal case is the Sage. That increases crit chance. A lot of uh, the characters just are desperate to get more crit because then they do something. And on scoring a critical hit, on top of what you're already doing with a crit, which is a massive damage increase, uh, this um, agent also has its cooldowns reduced by one. This is phenomenal. It's just a very, very good uh, card because uh, there are limited ways of reducing cooldowns for several of uh, the agents. But if you do have cooldown reduction, all of a sudden some of the abilities become ultra, ultra strong. Second uh, passive ability is the Forsaken that I want to highlight. Attacks of this agent have in uh, the highest form um, a 50% chance of inflicting daze. And if the enemy is already dazed, they inflict knockdown. And this is a crazy combination for multi attackers like Eddie. This is just absolutely insane because here is what is happening. You're uh, starting to daze an enemy and if you then later knock them down, you basically take them out of the game for two rounds. They cannot stand up by itself. Absolute phenomenal crowd control and a very strong card on, uh, the, right, uh, on the right character. Then next up, I wanted to talk about the Storm. Also a good card on the right character. Um, on level 5, uh, missed attacks will still graze for 30 points of damage. So that's not great for all of the characters, but it is great for characters that do have multi-attacks. Anna Sophie, Eddie and um, in particular Isaac are benefiting heavily from it. So if you are missing an attack, that will still mean you deal 30 points of damage. For reference, the base damage on a fully upgraded Isaac is 18. Um, so uh, sometimes he's even better off missing uh, to deal 30 points of damage. Mind you, the grazing attack goes through armor and will just deal the damage um, as nothing has happened. So it is also a great way of bypassing armor if you are not able to hit a target. So um, the storm is definitely something to watch out for. And then uh, finally, I wanted to talk about the serpent, which is one of the rare 
um, cards that use a um, activation on the highest level it has a cooldown of two and it simply gives you one ap that in itself is great it's, i mean it is a fantastic card and on the right character such as pornima who notoriously requires either cooldown reductions or additional forms of ap the serpent is dealing a good job because it gives you that extra ap every few turns um, fun fact if you uh, can reuse the cooldown to zero you cannot use the serpent again so you can only use it once per round uh, to prevent uh, abuses of um, characters uh, like uh, Anna, uh, Anna Marie for instance uh, with a level 5 serpent to always reduce the cooldown to uh, to zero and then essentially have unlimited actions they wouldn't want to do that therefore the serpent is limited to once per round so and that's really it those are the cards um, I gave you a good idea if you want to know how to mix and match them I would recommend you are checking out the build guides of each of the individual characters because I talk a bit about uh, card synergies there as well and other than that good hunting for both your equipment and your cards because they are vital parts of your character so um, see you in the next guide